read these three verses of scripture. We, we're continuing our journey in the book of Philippians. I'm going to read Philippians chapter 3. I want to look at verses 1 through 3. I'm going to read these three verses of scripture and I'm going to give you my, I'm going to give you my thought. Uh, Philippians chapter 3 verses 1 through 3 says, Finally, my brothers, rejoice in the Lord. Paul says, To write the same things to you is no trouble to me and is safe for you. Verse 2, he says, look out for the dogs. Look out for the evildoers. Look out for those who, who mutilate the flesh. Verse 3 says, for we are the circumcision who worship by the Spirit of God and, the glo and glory in Christ Jesus and put no confidence in the flesh. So I'll say amen, amen to the reading of God's word. This is part 17 of our joy of the local church series and today we're going to have this thought in our hearts and in our minds how to determine if I'm a Christ follower how to determine if I am a Christ follower father we thank you for what it is that you've done and we thank you for what you're going to do we ask you to bless us in Jesus matchless name amen amen and just as a sign of you ready for everything that God is going to say come on let's celebrate God one more time one more time I know he's going to say something. I know he's going to say something to us. Uh, anytime you're studying the word of God, and you probably already picked this up, God knows I have. Anytime we're walking through, in particular, the New Testament, uh, we've studied and we walk through several New Testament books, and you'll continue to kind of rediscover certain themes. There are themes that are reoccurring. Uh, one of the themes that are re re reoccurring that we kind of picked this up as we was walking through the Gospel of Mark and also Ephesians and now even in this letter that Paul wrote to this Philippian church is the importance of sound doctrine. It's important uh, that where we know uh, the, the word of God for real and make sure that we're getting what it is that God desires to say to us in a clear and in a, in a candid way. Thank you so much. So it's so important that we, we have sound doctrine, sound doctrine. Somebody say sound doctrine, sound doctrine. Yeah. Sound doctrine, the word sound just simply means healthy uh, for us to have healthy doctrine doctrine just means teaching so healthy teaching healthy teaching equals a healthy walk with God but I can't get I can't get I can get I can't have unhealthy teaching and then manifest in a healthy life it doesn't work that way a uh, healthy teaching goes in and then a healthy life should come out and here not only that's one thing that, that we continue to run into and even these last several weeks uh, just knowing the importance of making sure that I'm a genuine father follower of Christ. It, it, it's very important that we make sure we understand that. We, we, we studied this a couple of weeks ago where we, where we talked about as relates to an aligned life and an aligned testimony and the apostle was, was making sure that he pulled us in and said, I know we're saying something, we're, we're professing something, but are we possessing something? And here not only we, we discussed an aligned testimony, also last week the profile of a disciple. So what does a disciple look like? What is it that God is trying to uh, allow my life to manifest what is he trying to produce in as relates to my walk with him and, and, and plainly let me just say it this way what does a follower of Christ look like what does a follower of Christ look like maybe if you're taking notes this would be a good time to take some notes here because I'm just going to give you just a, a, a just a working definition of what a follower of Christ is because if I ask 10 different people I promise you we'll have 10 different answers on what an individual may think a follower of Christ is but I, I want us all to kind of the, the scripture says for us to all speak the same thing kind of want us all to be on the same page so simply a follower of Christ just simply means to have an intimate relationship with Jesus Christ an intimate relationship with Jesus Christ and I am imitating him in everything that I do an, an intimate relationship with Jesus Christ that's important because for a lot of people he's a man upstairs for a lot of people, he's a, a man up there somewhere around the corner, the big guy. You know, we, we, we talk about him as if he's some abstract object. He's just some big old hairy guy that may be up there somewhere. They got this big spoon waiting on us to mess up so he can zap us and kill us and send us to hell. But that is not who God is. And that's not a, what being a follower of Christ. Being a follower of Christ is someone who has an intimate relationship with him. Meaning I'm not already, I'm already not hiding anything from him as relates to he knows all. But because our relationship is intimate, I'm 
I'm not trying to hide anything from them. I'm literally trying to spend time with them. I'm, I'm literally trying to grow. I'm literally trying to become everything that he so desires for me to become because I want to have an intimate relationship with him. And I'm trying to imitate him. Yeah, this is so, it's so key, especially in our day and time because we, we, we find ourselves uh, trying to be like so many other individuals. And, and it's my desire. It's, it should be all of our desires for us to be more like him. I, I know we say I ain't none of Jesus, especially from north side. I ain't none of Jesus. And, and we know we're not any of Jesus. And that's the point. But the scripture says that every day I am to be continuing to grow. I, every day I'm to continue to be conformed into the image of the dear son. That's the entire point of being a follower of Christ. The way it's less of me and more of him. That, that's what JTB said. Not J. Turner Book Boulevard. No. JTB. John the Baptist. That's what he said. He said I must decrease and he must do what? He must increase. That, that's what being a follower of Christ is. I have an intimate relationship with him and I'm imitating him in my walk. And I am growing and I am developing and I am maturing to become everything that God had in mind when he made little old me. Come on, I, I, I'm becoming that. And that's what Paul is talking about. We got to get some healthy teaching, some sound doctrine in order for that to happen. And then I need to make sure that I'm genuinely in the faith. Paul said it like this, examine yourself to see whether you're in the faith. Test yourself, prove yourself. Come on, there, there, there's a little test that we can do. There's something that we can be able to, a, a way we can examine ourselves to make sure that we're following Christ for real though. And Paul is going to expound that on that a little bit further. So let me tell you the first point tonight because I know I'm not going to get done. I didn't get done at noon. I'm not going to get done tonight, but that's okay. I'm just going to stop when my time is up and we'll be all right. That's called FOMO. FOMO because I want you to tune in next week. Come next week. FOMO. Fear of missing out. You go, you need, you want to get the rest of that paper filled out. So here you, you'll show up. Be the Lord's will. You'll show up next week to be able to get the rest of that paper filled out. Just something about y'all in them papers, boy. Y'all still been hallway. Now what was this right here? What was that part? <laughs> you, you, you'll, get, you'll get it next week. Be, be, the Lord, be the Lord's will. A little FOMO. Fear of missing out. We want, you don't want you to we want you to miss out, so don't, don't miss out. Here, the first point is this. A, a true follower of Christ knows where to place their joy. Here, a, a true follower of Christ knows where to place their joy. And, and see, th this is important because if, if, we had to, if we had to kind of summarize this book, if we had to kind of summarize what it is that the apostle is saying to us as it relates to being a follower of Christ, as it relates to being one that is going after him, if we was to summarize this entire letter, if we was to put it kind of in one word, what would that word be if we was to summarize the book of Philippians? It'll be joy. Thank you so much. It'll be, it'll be jo joy is the way we describe this. And why do we say that this is the theme of the book? Because we see it over and over and over again that Paul continues to make mention. Of. Look what he says in verse 1. He says, finally, my brothers, look at this. He says, rejoice in your circumstances. He, he said, rejoice in, in you having your dream job. No, he, he says, rejoice. Where, where should we rejoice? Or who should we rejoice in? He says, in the Lord. So a, a true follower of Christ knows better than to place their, their joy on circumstances. Knows better. Show sure enough, but not put your joy uh, uh, in people. Uh, because people are fickle. And people will love you one minute and then hate you the next. People will sing your praises. People will say, uh, will say uh, here is our Savior. And then they'll say, give us Barabbas uh, in a few days. They'll say, crucify him. No, my friend, we should never, ever put our confidence and our faith in people. But I should always put my joy in the Lord. And this is what Paul is saying. And Paul does it like a good preacher because Paul is getting to this flip in chapter 3. And he starts with this one word. He says, finally. Finally, not, not, not like in conclusion of or, or not finally as in I'm, I'm getting ready to wrap this thing up because Paul got about 44 more verses. You know, he is. He is so that's what a good preacher said. I'm getting ready to close now. Paul, Paul said, I'm getting ready. I'm getting ready to close. I'm getting ready. I'm getting ready to reel it in. Getting ready. Come on. One more verse. Come on. Real, real quick. Stay with me. Don't quit me. Come on. All that stuff. But no, Paul is really transitioning. Paul is literally going from one thought to another. He's going from one place to another. And he wants to remind the Philippians where, you, where our joy should be. Isn't this amazing? His brother's in prison and he's reminding free people where their joy should be. 
Isn't this amazing? His brother doesn't know how his out. He doesn't know how he, how things are going to be or as it relates to his outcome. He doesn't know if he's going to get sentenced to death. He doesn't know if he's going to be a free man again. But he reminds individuals who are free where their joy should be. I've learned that there, there are people that could be incarcerated. There are people that can be in adverse situations and they can have more joy than the person that have the cutest girl on their arm, the, the sexiest man on their arm. They got money in the bank. They can live wherever they want to live and drive where they want to drive. But can I tell you that that does not mean that you have joy. No, oftentimes we have happiness. Oh, but we don't have joy. But whenever I put my joy in the Lord, it, it doesn't matter what happens because Job said in Job 14, one man that's born of a woman, they have a few days and they are filled with trouble. We, we're only going to be here for a little while. It would seem as if, if I'm only going to be here for a little while that the Lord will allow my little while to be joyful or full of all these, all these nice things. But no, he says man is born of a woman just a few days and it's going to be full, full of trouble. Jesus said in John 13, 16, 33. It's not on your notes. I'm just rolling, y'all. John 16, 33 said in the world, you're going to have trouble. In the world, you're going to have pain. In the world, you're going to have opposition. But Jesus said, be of good cheer. He said, for I have overcome the world. I'm looking for a group of people that understand that this joy that I have, yes, sir, this joy I have has nothing to do with my circumstances. I, 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 read, a, I read a story earlier this week of a, of a Christian family who, whose home caught on fire and the, and the firefighters came to their door and told them quickly, no time to pack, must go, must go, must go. And here they, they, they had to move expedition, they had to move quickly. They couldn't take anything. They spent their entire life building this home. They spent their entire life uh, acquiring all these things. They All their family pictures, all their family heirlooms, all of their little things that they had, they had to leave it behind. And I love that the husband looked at the wife and said, did you get the joy? Come on, y'all. Y'all missed it. Because here it is. Everything else getting ready to go in smoke. Everything else and we getting ready to lose it. Come on. I know we worked all these years to pay this house off. I know we got all of our little curios with our little whatnots in the curio. I know we got our nice little, a little collection of this and collection of that. We're going to miss the baby photos and the grandkids photos. But at the end of the day, if all that go up in smoke, don't forget your joy. Oh, come on. I'm looking for somebody right now. Oh, the way you will grab the joy. I know you may have to leave some things, but oh, don't 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 you leave your joy. That, that was a difficult thing for me when, when my parents transitioned. When I was I was there when my when we was burying my mother and I was there in the cemetery and they was like, come on, Kobe, we got to go. We got to, I'm just standing there looking and I'm saying to myself, my God, I got to leave my mama out here. I, I, could, I, couldn't, I, couldn't, I couldn't wrap my mind around. I'm leaving my mama here. Leaving this, this my dad. I got to leave him out here. Oh, but if I got to leave him in the cemetery, I'm not leaving my joy. Come on here. I, 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 may, I, may, I may got to say see you later for a little while and there'll be some people you got to say sayonara. There's some people you got to say I'll see you later. There's some people that, that willfully walk out of your life and some people that walk out of your life that you don't want them to go. Oh, but at the end of the day, I still, I believe I'm a little more excited than y'all are tonight, but that's okay. I still got my joy in spite of things that's going on. I still got my joy in spite of the firing. I still got my joy in spite of the divorce. I still got my joy in spite of the bankruptcy. I still got my joy in spite of the foreclosure. I still got my joy in spite of the repossession. I still got my joy. That's what Paul is saying. Paul said, do you still got your, you still got your, your joy. Let me, let me remind you of something that we talked about before as it relates to joy because joy is closely related. Look at this is good. Joy is closely related to gladness and happiness. It's on your notes. Although joy is more a state of being than an emotion. <laughs> Here it is. Joy is a result of a choice. Lord have mercy. That's good. That's good. I know things are difficult, but the scripture tell me that I can choose to have joy. I, I know I know you got a whole lot of reasons. You got 99 problems. You got a whole lot of reason to complain. A whole lot of reason to mumble and groan. But Paul says and, or, or biblically the definition of joy has nothing to do with what's happening around me, but it's a result of a choice. It's, it's closely related. It's first cousin to happiness. Oh, but it's a state of being more than an emotion. See, can emotion, I can be happy one moment and then things can devastate me another oh but I can make a choice with tears running down my eyes that I'm still gonna have joy oh when, when, when I don't know how things are gonna work out I still can have some joy joy is look at it joy is a positive a positive human condition that can be either a feeling or an action Lord have mercy joy look at it joy is both a feeling and an action yes sir joy joy, joy is a feeling and an action it's, I, I got joy in the city of my soul 
and I'm going to walk that thing out. Come on, it's an it's a, it's a adjective and it's a verb. Come on, it's a noun and an adjective, rather. It's a person, place, or thing, and, here, and, and I'm going to walk that thing out. Joy is something that I possess. Joy is something that I have. And joy is something that I'm going to live out. I still, I still got my joy. And that's what Paul says. And if you're a child of God, and if I'm a child of God, a real relationship with Jesus produces joy. Oh, come on here. Y'all got to go help me here. What, a, what am I trying to tell you? If, 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 no joy? I would question if you got Jesus. Yeah. Come on. The, the fact that you have Jesus and you understand. That's why you need to understand who God is. That's why you have a proper understanding. Have to have sound doctrine. That's why you got to know who he is. Because when I understand who he is, I'll have, I'll have joy. Let me give you the last thing here. Because joy comes from a constant relationship with Jesus Christ. And here we understand who he is and what it is that he's going to do. When I have this right relationship with him. Him, I'm going to joy in the fact that he justified me. I'm a joy in the fact that he's adopted me. I'm a joy in the fact that he's reconciling me. He's saved me. He's loving me. He's delivering me. Come on, somebody. He's leading me and, and guiding me. I, I'm going to I'm 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 have my joy because, because of him. And this is what Paul is reminding this church at Philippi. He's in prison. He doesn't know what his outcome is going to be, but he's telling them that you can make sure that your joy is in the Lord. It better be in the Lord. Don't, not, it's showing up better not being people because they're getting ready to talk about some people here in a second. And our joy better not be wrapped up in folk because folk, 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 folk will mess you up. Look at the next point. A true follower of Christ understands that there is safety in teaching. Yeah, this is good. This is good. This is what a true follower of Christ understands that there, there's safety in teaching. And in, in, in our culture, oftentimes folk think that there's that teaching is boring. You know, teaching is just kind of whatever. Uh, but but no. But Paul says there's this safety in teaching. Where does he say this at? It's in the same verse, verse one, Philippians chapter three, verse one. He says he says not only should your joy be in the Lord. But look, he says he said to write the same things to you. Look what Paul says. It is no trouble to me. He said, it doesn't bother me to write the same things to you. I, I've told you that the, the theme of the book of Philippians is joy. That's what the theme is. So he's reminding them again and again and again that we ought to have joy. He continues to remind them of this, that you ought to have joy. But even further than that, Paul is also reminding them of the opposition. He's reminding them of the persons that's, that's coming up against them. Paul is reminding them that we need to be sober and to be vigilant. Paul is reminding them. He said, the fact that I got to continue to remind you, continue to tell you this thing. He says, there's no trouble to me. Look what it means in the original. No trouble in the original. It, it literally means bothersome, pertaining to or being called by trepidation or reluctance. Paul is saying, I'm not reluctant to keep telling you the same thing over and over again. Paul said, I'm not apologizing about telling the same thing. So it is as a parent to a child. A parent has to continue to tell their child over and over and over and over again. That's, 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 that's leadership. That's what leadership starts it starts at the at the home it starts in the house and I continue to tell my child I don't let them just do what they want to do I know they just want to stay up all night I know they just want to eat what they want to eat I know they just want to go where they want to go but I got to continue to tell you again and again and again I got to train up my child in the way that they should go when they become old they will not depart and so it is in the natural so it is in the spiritual God allows us to continue to get the word again and again and again and again because he wants me to get this thing down in my soul so when the storms of life come when the rain come when the situations come I'll be able to withstand no matter what because I heard it again and again and again and here I love this I love this we got to learn how how to say it again Paul said it don't make me no never mind he said to keep on telling you the same thing over and over again. One of our leadership sessions, we were studying uh, this brother by the name of Patrick Lencioni, and he was talking about this, this new book that he wrote. And the title of his book is there on your page, and it's on the screen. It just simply it means, it, the, the book is just simply entitled The Motive, The Motive. And he simply talked about why so many leaders advocate their most important responsibility. He said, why so many, why many, so many people relinquish or fail to do their duty? Because leadership is not easy. Leadership is not easy. The one, the one that do it well make it look easy the ones the ones that do it well make it look easy leadership is not easy leading your children is not easy come on leading your home is not easy the position that God has you at on that job it is not easy but it's our responsibility not to just uh, not to just because it's tough and because it's difficult and because I don't like doing it just to, just to relinquish my responsibility just to walk away from my responsibility just to abandon my responsibility or to leave my responsibility just because it's tough but no and, and so 
told so brother Lencioni said there's some things that every leader must do and he says that repeating yourself constantly to reinforce culture and mission Come on, we got to continue to repeat ourselves. He said, this, he's talking about in the business world. We can grab this in, in, in our family and we can apply this in the kingdom. I got to continue to reinforce. I got to continue to repeat myself to reinforce culture and mission because the culture, culture will drift on you if you're not careful. Culture won't know, not only will it drift, you know, this, this is what we do and this is who we are. And then a couple of times when that's not what you do and that's not what you possess because here, because culture is what you create and also what you allow. But culture will drift and culture will leak. All, all it takes is a couple of Debbie Downers to poke some holes in the culture. <laughs> All it takes is a couple of Debbie Downs and say, it don't take all that. It'll take, all it takes is a couple of Debbie Downs and say, what you think? You think you, who you, you think you are? You a single mama and you didn't do all that? You, you couldn't do the last thing. And you couldn't do that. But all it takes is a couple of people to, to, to poke holes in what it is that you're trying to do. But here, not only do you got to keep reinforcing in, in an organization, you got to keep reinforcing to yourself. You got to keep on reminding yourself. You got to keep on reading the word. You got to keep on depositing the word in you and remind yourself what it is that God has said and what God has has said concerning you. David said so in 1 Samuel 30 and 6 the scripture says he encouraged himself yeah. in, in the Lord his God. So I, we got some openings. I got some openings around here. I got some openings that where we must be because uh, the leader must be a chief reminding officer. Yes sir. See everybody want to be a, C, a CFO. Everybody want to be a, a CEO. <laughs> some folk want to be a CMO. <laughs> but I'm looking for some. I'm looking for a C. Oh, oh, yes, sir. I'm, I'm looking for a chief reminding. Oh, I'm looking for somebody that will, that will continue to remind themselves, oh, that though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. I'm looking for somebody that won't get tired of your marriage and tired of your kids and tired of all the things that's going on around you, but you're going to keep on reminding yourself of what God said. Oh, it looks like this, but I'm going to remind myself of what God said. Oh, it, it feels this way, but I'm going to remind myself of what God said. I'm not going to allow what is happening to called me to let go, to relinquish, to remove myself from my responsibility. No, I got to keep on reminding, reminding myself. And that's what Paul said. Paul said, don't make me know never mind for me to keep on saying the same thing to you over and over and over again. In fact, he said, verse 1 again, Philippians chapter 3, verse 1, he said, come on, this Bible study. Y'all, y'all right? Y'all good for Bible study? Y'all cold again? Y'all cut down, cut down a little bit because they cold. They cold. I'm uh, cut it up a little bit. <laughs> so, so look what Paul said. Paul said, I, I, I keep writing to you the same things. He says, it's no trouble to me. Look what he says. It's safe for you. Y'all missed it. Look, look, because I, I said that a true follower of Christ understands that there is fun in teaching. <laughs> Go ahead, yes, I like preaching. There, 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 there's emotionalism in teaching. No, 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 no. There, there's safety. Paul says, I, I want to keep telling you the same thing over and over again because it's safety in teaching. It's safety in that. It's, look what this word literally means. It's cautionary. It's protecting against possible danger or failure. I'm not just telling my child that the iron is hot because I want to mess them up. I'm not just telling them that no, you shouldn't just call everybody your best friend. You just Come on, it's only the second day of school, and now you come home talking about who your best friend is. Come on, it's only the second, it's only the third day, and we got to come on, pump the brakes. Come on, pump the brakes, baby. You just met them. What's the, what, what him name again is again? Oh, what is his name? What is his name again? Come on, talking about your best. So we're not trying to squander, trying to blow your, your fun, trying to, trying to be a, a, a party pooper, but no, we got this. It, it's safety. It's safety in pumping the brakes. It's safety in teaching, and here oftentimes in the body of Christ we run we run so much danger in this because I, I say this all the time because I know I know what I'm saying because here we always want something fresh we always want something new we've heard that I already heard that pastor you don't talk that then when we talked about this subject and you we already talked about the, what a true disciple need to be you already talked about an aligned testimony you've already talked about all these types of things I know but here can I tell you that we're repeating ourselves because it's safety Paul says I keep telling you the same thing thing over and over again not to try to control you not to try to manipulate you but to prepare to be able to prepare you for what's on the road because one that does not prepare the people that are following look how the scripture describes them in Isaiah 56 and 10 the scripture says his watchmen are blind they are all without knowledge look at this they are all silent dogs they, they cannot bark or warn <laughs> Dreaming, lying down, loving to slumber. So, so a lazy leader 
can't warn you anything. A, a, a lazy leader is one that just lets you just do what you want to do and allow you just to kind of go on and just because they don't want to hurt your feelings, don't want to offend you, don't want don't do to do boo boo boo. But no, that's not that's not helping anybody. But Paul says that we got to make sure that we warn. Look what he says in Acts chapter twenty, verse twenty-seven. This is probably one of the most emotional texts in all of the Bible. This is so good. You ought to read it when we get a chance because Paul was here with these elders for multiple years. He's getting ready to move on to go and plant another church. He's going on about his business. And here they're, they're getting ready to, they, Paul is getting ready to leave. And he's giving him their, their farewell. He's giving them his farewell address as it were. Acts 20, 27 says, I never shrank. Look what he says. I never shrank or kept back or fell short from declaring to you the whole purpose and plan and counsel of God. Paul says, I've been going through like you've been going through. Paul I've been running for my life. This has not been easy. There's not a blueprint on how to do this. There's not, there's not a map on how to do this outside of the inspiration of the word of God and the leading of the Holy Spirit. But no matter how difficult Paul said, I never sat back. Yeah. Paul said, I never gave up. He said, I never failed short from declaring to you the whole purpose and the plan of God or giving you the whole counsel of God. Verse 31, he says, therefore, because of this, look what he said, be always alert and on God. We'll come back to that in a moment. He said, being mindful that for three years, look what he said, for three years, <clears throat> he said, I never stopped night or day seriously to admonish, to admonish and advise and exhort you. Look at this, one by one with tears. Paul said, I never stop. And that's all, that's all I'm trying to say to us today, that when it comes to us with it, if, if it was easy, everybody would do it. Come on, if it, was, if it was just something that I can just say abracadabra, if it was just something I just can, can just say a magic prayer, and I got everything that I need, then everybody would do it. But no, there must be some stick to itiveness. There must be some determination. There must be something in me that everybody Every day and every night, I got to be willing to lend myself to the word of God and lend myself to the voice of God and hear what heaven is saying to me that I can keep on going forward and keep on making sure that I be advised and exhorted and encouraged. Peter had the same heart, you know, in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 12. Look what Peter said. Therefore, I intend sometimes, Peter says, he said, I intend always to remind you of these qualities. Though you know them, come on, all my deep folk, I already know this. We know this already. We got this already. We, we, we took this class. Look, he said, he said, even though you know them, he says, and are established in the, in the truth that you have. Verse 13, he says, I think it right. Look what Peter says. I think it right. As long as I am in this body, as long as I am breathing. <laughs> Peter said, as long as I'm in this body, to do what? To stir you up by the way of, by way of reminder. Lord, have mercy. This is why. This is why we have to continue to talk about these 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 elementary doctrines this is why we have to continue to get grounded in the things of God this is why we got to continue to pour a foundation here truth and love we're only six years old we can't act like we're 21 years old we can't act like we're 30 years old come on here we're only six years old and we have to be intentional about pouring a foundation and and and, and just like Peter I feel like it's necessary to keep on stirring you up by, by reminding you, verse 14 says, since I know that the putting off of my body will be soon, Peter says. He says, as the Lord, as the Lord Jesus Christ made clear to me. Peter says, I'm not going to be here forever. Verse 15, he says, and I will make every effort so that after my departure, look at this, you may be able at the time, look at this, to recall these things. Peter said, I'm not going to be around forever, and I want to put so much word in you. That when the enemy come, and lo, the enemy will come. When those difficult days come, and yes, those difficult days will come, you'll be able to recall what it is that you have been taught. He didn't finish that. Second Peter three one said this. I know. He said this now. The say. He said now. This is now the second letter that I'm writing to you. <clears throat> he said, beloved. He said, in both of them, I am stirring up your sincere mind by way of what. By, by way of reminder. I want to remind you. You know why? We need to be reminded because there's safety in teaching. I don't have to experience what others experience in order for me to learn what it is I need to learn. They say, let me live my life. Come on, I said this foolishly as a young person. Mama, you made your mistakes. Mama, you did your thing. Let me live my life. Let me fall in love. Let me do what I need to do. I know you and daddy, well, you and daddy, well, you and mama did this, and, you, and well, you ain't got, come on, they, they, they get the, anybody child ever 
go back down and start running down the laundry list of stuff that they know. Well, you and well, come on, y- y'all ain't been married nothing, but uh, and I'm 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 24, huh? and y'all don't, y'all have been there, y'all don't, come on, and they go back to they're trying to trying to size you up. And here, come on, that's what I'm trying to tell you, you big dummy. I'm trying to tell you not to do what I did. Come on, oh y'all don't call your kids dummies. I guess uh, I guess that's the thing. And that's what I'm trying to tell you, not to do what I did. Mama made some mistakes. Daddy made some mistakes. I'm trying to prevent you from doing from 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 doing from doing the same. So I got I got to remind you. And come on, people of God, the grass doesn't, the grass looks greener, but it's not always greener. Come on, I'm trying to tell you that it is the elementary thing. It's the things that I learned. Come on, in Sunday school, it's the things that I learned that are that in Bible study. It's the things that I learned when I get myself over to the things of God and the Word of God that help me. All those high things, all those emotional things, all those high times and all those praise breaks that I had and all those times I was going to lap and leap around the room. All that's good. But that don't help me when I'm discouraged. I need, I need to be able to pull on some word. Come on, somebody. I need to be able to pull something. I got to pull something out of me. Let me go. 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 Because cock on my back. Let me go. A true follower of Christ understands that there is there's safety in always being on high alert. Not, not only is there safety in teaching, look, 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 look what Paul says. There's safety also, I believe, in always being, not, not sometimes, always being on high alert. Don't worry, y'all. I'm not going to finish. Don't worry. It's okay. I know. Uh, and we're only going to look at a couple of verses here. But here, there's always safety in being on high alert. Look what, look what Peter says. Look what Paul, Peter not here no more. Look what Paul says in Philippians 3.2. He says, he said, look out. He said, look out. He says it three different times. He says, look out, look out, look out, look out. He says it again and again and again. And, and can I tell you that one, that's one thing that I've learned. One thing that I've learned that whenever God gets the shifting, whenever God gets the moving, you can always look for the enemy to do his thing. Whenever things are falling in place, come on, it's not being pessimistic. It's not looking at the glass halfway full, empty rather. It's not just, well, I'm just waiting on something bad to happen. That's not what it is. But it's called being sober. In fact, this is what Paul said. Paul said, look out. Look what that means. He said, so it means to watch carefully it means to be vigilant to be on the lookout or be careful have you ever heard the wolf cry and the new no that ain't what i'm going to say have you ever a little poke out, I don't know about that. Have, have, have you ever had your your mind so wrapped up in something happening and you were so excited about that thing happening and then you can almost taste it. You can almost feel it. You can always, you can almost walk into it. And then you're so excited about that. And it happened and it manifests. And then some out of nowhere come and slap the taste out your mouth. <laughs> and and just, just before you can put your foot down from your dance. <laughs> Here goes something else trying to knock the wind out of you. So we have to learn to watch out. And here, this is just a spiritual, this is called spiritual warfare. And that's what the devil does. The devil looks for us to be to a place to where either we're too high or we're too low. The enemy looks for this. In Luke chapter 4, the scripture talks about how Jesus was, 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 was driven into the wilderness by the Spirit of God. He was being pushed into the, into the wilderness. And the Bible says that Satan said to Jesus, if you be the Son of God, command these stones to be made bread. He said, if you be the Son of God, cast yourself down off this mountain and the God will give you angels. The angels give charge and he'll catch you. Won't, you won't fall. Now, come on, if you bow down and worship me, he said, I give you everything that you see. And the Bible says, Jesus said, it is written, it is written, it is written. And here, and here it is, the Bible says that, that the devil, he, 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 he fleed. But I love what Luke 4, I think it's verse 13 says, he says, but he left for a season. <laughs> He, he left just for, just for a little while, just, just, to give, just to give you a little break. He will be, can I, can I prophesy? He'll be back directly. He, he'll be back directly. Can I, can, I, can, I, can I give you a sure, a sure word? He will be back. I love what one translation, I believe it's New Living, says he left for a more opportune time. He, he leaves for a more opportune. What's the more opportune time when your heart is broke? I was trying to figure out when I got married, Lord knows this is true, and I've testified this before. When I got married, I was trying to figure out because they all of them started saying, Hey, Kobe. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. As I got married, he leading up into it, wasn't nobody. Come on, wasn't, wasn't nobody there. Y'all was, it wasn't nobody. Now they said, Hey, hey, what? Where you been at? Come on here. Where, where you come from? Y'all, where you go, where you, where's that? Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. It just, it just, it just, they just come out. As soon as you make up in your mind, the way you finish, I'm, 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 oh, I'm getting ready to do this. I'm getting ready, I'm getting ready to stand. I'm getting ready, I'm gonna do this and do it. And all of a sudden, here come, hey. Hey, hey, hey. hey. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. <laughs> 
<laughs> I can't say that. Anyway, the point, the point I'm trying to make is, is as soon as you make up in your mind to do what it is that you say you're going to do, the enemy always comes for a more opportune time because what, maybe, maybe I'm vulnerable because I'm, because I'm emotional right now. Or maybe I'm just a little too happy and I took my foot off the gas. I'm just finna take me a break. I deserve it right now. I'm getting ready to relax. I'm getting ready to do me. And I'm just finna, I'm finna pamper myself. And I'm finna do this. And you go right ahead. It may not be a hey. Maybe a hey. Let me get out of here. Let me get out of here. Let me get out of here. Let me get, let me get out of here. Let me get out of here. Hey. 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 Hey, 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 oh, 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 hey, oh. The, the, look, Paul, Paul says, Paul says, Paul says, watch out, look out for, and look what he says, look out, here, verse 2, here it is, look out, he said, he said look out for the dogs. Somebody looks at some, some single, some single sister just said, see, that's my word. See, all men dolls. And see, I knew, see, I knew right then. See, that's why I'm done with them. Because I, I, the last, I, that's, no, that's not, that's not, that's not what Paul, that's not, that's not what Paul is. He said, look out for the, for the, for the, for the, for the dogs. Look, 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 literally, look, look, look at the type of dog that the apostle is, look at the type of dog that the apostle is speaking. He's speaking of, look at this, unusually wild dogs, unclean kind. I, I love this, he, unqualified. <clears throat> Listen, listen to me carefully, because listen to what Paul is, is talking. And I told you that here, this is, keep, keep in context what, what, what Paul is speaking about, because I said you'll see this over and over again, the, the importance of having sound doctrine. Remember, I just didn't say that, just to say that earlier. This is what Paul is doing. Paul is, is warning this church. Paul is helping this church to make sure they have sound doctrine. And, and who are individuals? Who are the persons that the enemy use to bring unhealthy teaching? It's people, it's individuals that try to come and whisper to us and try to get us off course and try to get us to a place that we're, we're forgetting about what it is that God has said. And Paul is saying that these are some, these are some, these are some wild dogs. These are some, these are some unclean animals. And here in the day and time that, that Paul was writing this, dogs were not man's best friend. I know we put them in nice little, little sweaters now, and they got a little cute little bootsies, and then we put bows in their head, and we, and we, we driving down the street 90 miles an hour, and they and I laugh, and they licking us, and all that stuff. That's not how, that's not how, that's not how Paul, that's not how dogs were back in the ancient world. But these dogs that Paul was referring to, listen to this, these were dogs that roamed the streets. These were dogs that were scavengers. Listen to me closely. They, they, used, to, they used to run in packs. And here they hunted. And they were, they were, in, they were literally, they would snarl. And they would bite. And they would, they would fight one another. And they'll fight anybody that comes, comes into their pack. Or come around them. Or, or come and bother them. Or stand in the way of something that they need. And this is what Paul is saying. Paul said, watch out. Watch out for these, these dogs. What, what, what particular group is Paul talking about? There's, there's a, lot of indiv- a lot of things we can make application, but, but in particular, I believe he's talking about these Judaizers. These Judaizers are individuals. I have to find it for you. Judaizers just simply, come on, this Bible said it, right, y'all? Y'all don't want to, come on. Judaizers is legalists. These were Jews who professed Christ, but still hung on to their Judaistic religion. In particular, the right, you'll see it in a second, the right of circumcision. And to the law of Moses. This is, this is in particular, I believe this is this is this is who Paul is speaking is speaking to because they believe. Listen, this is what what Judaizers. This is break it down for you. They believe a man became a became a Christ follower by first becoming a Jew. The man was to embrace Judaism, man or woman, and embrace Judaism with all his rituals and his ceremonies, and and to be circumcised. And begin to obey the law of Moses, then the man could accept Christ as his savior. So this is what Judaizers, this is what Paul was saying. That after my departure, so he told the church at Ephesus, he told his elders, he said, I warned you night and day. He said, I'm getting ready to leave. And when I leave, after my departure, grievous wolves are going to come. He said, not from the outside, but the inside. And they're going to begin to teach some things that are counter and contrary to the word of God. And there's always this pack of dogs. That try to come around and try to undo what Christ has already done. 
There's always this pack of dogs that always try to put more on you. There's always this, this pack of dogs that always try to tell you that your, your relationship with God. In their case, it was the law. In their case, it was the law of Moses. In their case, it was circumcision. Oh, but can I tell you, in our day and time, they're called Sabbath keepers. In our day and time, this individual tell you, if you're not baptized this particular way, then you're not right with God. If you don't go to our particular church or a part of our particular denomination, you're not right with God. If you don't do it this way and say it that way, if you don't speak in tongues, if you don't wear long robes, if you don't wear long skirts, and if you don't wear this and have that on, then you're not really saved. Y'all don't know no folk like that. Here, and I tell you, here, put here, this is what this is what Paul is saying. Paul say, watch out for them dogs. And here, let me that that's the, that's that's the context that Paul is talking about. And here, you know I mean? let me make some application uh, for for twenty one for 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 two thousand twenty one and and and. 1989 done having to make some application for, for us because anybody and any person that comes along and try to undo what God has already spoken anybody and anything that try to come your way and God has you going this way God have said this God have told you to go that way God have told you to focus on this and somebody to come and try to underdo and undermine and undo rather what it is that God has said you got to watch out for them dogs because they'll try, to, they'll try to pull you off your focus. Yes, they, yes, they will. They'll try to pull. And you know what God has said. You know what God has decreed. You know what God told you to go. You know what God told you to do. And folk will always try to get you off course. That's what the enemy does. Because I heard one preacher say, if the devil can't make you dirty, he'll make you distracted. <laughs> If he can't make you dirty, if he can't make you filthy, come on here, he'll get your focus off. Yes, he will. And here, I got to get to the place that where I understand. Got to watch out for them dogs. Because Paul is saying, just like dogs are unclean and filthy, in their context, I know we got some dog lovers. I'm sorry, y'all. It's like dogs are unclean and filthy. Paul says, so are they. Yeah. Just like dogs are, are snarling and howling and vicious, so are they. Just like dogs try to try to try to kill, they'll even kill you for getting in the way of what it is that they that they trying that they trying to do, and they they run in packs and they run in little groups. He said, he said, so 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 are they. So here, my point is, truth and love, nation. We got to make sure that we understand what salvation is about. We understand that it's not about what I wear. It's not about what day I worship. Come on here, I don't I don't. You right, you right. I am the worship on Saturday. I'm supposed to worship on Saturday, on Sunday, on Monday, on Tuesday, on Wednesday, on Thursday, on Friday. I'm supposed to worship. Right. I'm supposed to worship every day. Then there are persons that are doing this. This is my only response to them. They'll say, well, you're supposed to be doing this. And I say, I'm already saved, though. <laughs> I'm already saved. <laughs> In, in other words, you, you can't tell me that I need this. No, it's Jesus plus nothing. I, I, don't, I know it's, it's, my salvation is not on the day of a week. And now after I receive Jesus, there's some things that are, are supposed to be an outgrowth of that relationship. But in order for me to be in a right relationship with him, you already missed that train, sir. I'm already saved. You mean tell me I got to be baptized like this? I've been baptized seven times. Come on here. <laughs> I, got, I got baptized. I remember as a child, I got baptized. I got baptized another two or three times since I've been, been, I've been, since I've been saved for real. Come on, I've been baptized a couple of times. So, but I'm already a child of God. And that's all that I'm trying to say. Don't let anyone tell you or try to undo what it is that God has already done. But no, we ought to be confident. Philippians 1.6 says, in this very thing. The one that had begun this good work in us, he's able to perform. Look what, look what Ephesians 2 and 8 says. He says, for by grace you have been saved. Yeah. How? He says, through faith. This is good. He says, and not your own doing. I don't care how good you are. Now, you may be a goody two shoes. You only got an overdue book in the library. I understand all that. You, but it's not none, nothing that we've done. But salvation is a gift. It's a gift from God. And Paul says, watch out from these, watch out for these dogs. He goes on, he says, be, be on the lookout, not only of the dogs, but look what he says. He says, look out for evildoers. This is good. He said, he said watch out for evildoers. But this, this, is, this is where it's so key for the local church because these evildoers that Paul is referring to, he's not talking about the folk that are, that are smoking and drinking and cussing and, and phonificating and doing all that stuff. No, no, Paul is talking about these religious elite. These are the folk that are, these are the real evildoers that are really slide right past you. You don't even know it. And you'd be like, yeah, these real evildoers are where you'd be like, mother. <laughs> you'd be like, you'd be like, you, these are the real evildoers. Paul, Paul is cold blooded because Paul is talking to these individuals that, that all they do, they, all they do is the, they have the outward down pack. 
They take care of all of the things on that. They got their long flowing robes. They, they got their long prayers. They, they, they got all of the out there circumcised on the eighth day. Paul is going to talk about all that in a moment. He says all of this stuff that we do on the outside, we've mastered how to fool one another. But Paul is speaking, he says, not just about what, it, what we do on the outside, because anytime, that, well, why, why is it evil? Because anytime I do anything other than glorifying Christ or other than giving honor to Christ, if I'm just doing it to, so you can be impressed by me, it's evil. If I'm doing it just so you can think I'm so Mr. and Mrs. Much as Such, it's evil. And Paul is saying this is the ultimate evil because these are people who look good on the outside. On the inside, they're full of dead man's bones. These are the individuals that, that Paul is talking about. Where, and here we got to watch it. Come on, truth and love. We got to watch it in our local church. That we're not individuals. They got all our Christian needs. We know how to talk in tongues. We know how to decree and declare. We know how to prophesy. We know how to preach. We know how to sing. We know how to pull down the glory and the Shekinah. But then when we're making it all about us and when, we, when, we, when we're trying to turn people on to us. But a, a true follower of Christ never turns people on to them. But they always point persons to the cross. Yes, they do. That's what they always do. And Jesus, Jesus, you think Paul just reading into this. Look what Jesus said. We're going to wrap it up. We're not going to get done. Look at it. Matthew 7. Look what Jesus says. Not everyone who says to me, Lordy, Lordy, but enter into the kingdom of heaven. But the one, here it is, who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Verse 22. Look what he says. On that day, many will say to me, Lordy, Lordy. We, we did not, we not prophesy in your name. Cast out demons in your name. Do mighty works in your name. Leap, dance, buck. Come on here. Give. Come on, you can put anything. Soul wind. Put all that in there. And look what he says in verse 23. Then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. We, 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 we see this so evident in the, in the ministry of Christ because the, the prostitutes Jesus was cool with. In fact, Jesus was in love with sinners, and sinners loved him. It was the religious elite that Christ had a, a, a problem with. It was those folk that felt like they had it together. And it's, it, and it's the same thing when it comes to our relationship with God. If I, if I approach my relationship with God as if I got it all together, those are the ones. So I'm the one that's on the outside looking, looking in. Let me keep going. This is going to be the last thing we're going to discuss. Look at it, because I got be, to be, watch out. I got to watch out. Look at the third thing he said. He said, look out. For those who mutilate the flesh. This is a, this is a, if, if you y'all talk about my left hook, this, this, is, this is a left hook for real. Paul, Paul already called these folks a dog. <clears throat> and, and, I, and I love this, thank you, thank you, Kobe Ghost, because here, Paul, the, 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 the Jews <clears throat> made a habit of calling any and everyone that was a Gentile, they called them a dog. They would call them a dog. They're, they're dog. They're scoundrels. I told you when they was heading up to Jerusalem, they had to go through Samaria. They'll go the long way. They'll go over the river and through the woods and cross it just so they wouldn't step foot in dog territory. They, 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 they couldn't stand any Gentiles, especially Samaritans. They couldn't, they couldn't stand. And here the Jews would call Gentiles dogs, but Paul is calling Jews dogs. He's calling his own people a dog. Y'all don't like that because... If, I don't, if I'm not on the corner with you saying black lives matter. <laughs> if, I, if I happen to say all lives matter. <laughs> and I understand what we mean. But the point is, I can't be more, I can't, I can't be more nationally charged than I am Christ charged. Come on here. I, I can't be more pro anything. I, I'm, not, I'm not ashamed of my, 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 who, who, my ethnicity. I'm not ashamed of my roots. I know I'm, I'm, I'm not, all that. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a part of that. But that does not identify me in the big picture, in the meta narrative, in the big picture. It is my relationship is in him. Come on, it's in him that I live, in him that I move, in him that I have my very being. And the point that I'm trying to make is Paul slapped his own people. We know Paul loved his people. He said in Romans 10, 1, he says, my heart desire, my prayer is to Israel to be saved. Paul said, I'd be, I'd be, you can call me a curse if my people could be saved. I'll miss it for them. That's how much he loved his people. He loved his people, but when it came down to his people and Jesus, who you think he was going with? But there are some of us that we're more, we more, we more black than we, than we Christians. And some of us, we more, we more Democrat than we Christians. Then there's some folk that's more Republican than, they, than we Christians. <laughs> Hello. Hello. So, 
here, here, this, they're talking about the circumcision. Let me, let me wrap this up because this is the point I'm, I'm going to stop on. Because you had individuals that only master the outward. What, what is circumcision? Circumcision is the eighth day. The eighth day, every Jewish boy must be circumcised. Must be, and that is the cutting away of the flesh. It's a cutting away of the extra. And this is, not only is this something they did that, that, would be, that, was, that was hygienically good, it's good for the hygiene, but it's also, it's a, it's a sign. It's a sign to say, I belong to God. It's a mark. And, it, and it's literally, God came to Abraham and told Abraham, I need you and everybody in your house to be circumcised. And listen, this is what the Jews would do. The Jews had the circumcision outwardly, but miss the circumcision inwardly. And there are so many of us to where we get tied up and hung up in the circumcision with just a symbol to say a cutting away of the old. And if I would be even further, y'all wouldn't think I'm trying to be funny. I'm not trying to be funny. It's even, that's a male organ. That's the reproducing organ. That's the organ that reproduces. And so here, God is saying, if you're going to produce anything, it needs to be lent over to me. And everything that you're going to produce and everything that you're going to do, is going, you're going to do it in me and through me. And so that's all that circumcision is. It's just saying that God is not, is not my life and I'm just tagging you on to my life. But no, God, you are everything and everything that comes from me, I'm going to give you glory and give you honor. There are so many people in the body of Christ. We get caught up. Look at it. It's on the screen. It's on your notes. The true follower of Christ does not get caught up in the symbol, but in the significance. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. There. I appreciate y'all too. But I appreciate y'all. Because, because we, we get caught up in the, in the symbol. We get caught up in first Sunday, communion Sunday. I tried to fool y'all. I told noonday. I tried to fool y'all one season. But right now we'll take communion. I put it on Thursday. I put it on first Thursday. I said, so everybody coming on first Sunday to commune. I said, let me get the saints to come out on Thursday and put communion on Thursday night. Yeah, that, that, they, they ain't want that bad. They're like, nah, I'm good. I'm just going to get a little yeah, got some Marita bread right here. Got a little Welchers and I'm good. I, I see all is, all is well. All is well. I'm just going to commune right here from the house. <laughs> we get caught up in the symbol. And not the significant, it's not, it's, not it's not the little stale little bread. It's not the little, it's not the little nasty little juice. Come on here. It's what it, it's what it symbolizes. It's, what it sim- it's not water baptism. Come on, water baptism, that liquid grave. Christ commanded us to, to, to be baptized, but it's not the symbol. My, my baptism is not my salvation. It's a symbol of my salvation. And here these individuals, they got caught up in the symbol, and then they lost the significance. Let me read these verses, and I'm done. Acts 15, 1, he says, because this was a big deal, you all, but some men came down from Jerusalem and were teaching brothers. Look at it, teaching the brothers. Unless you are circumcised according to the custom of Moses, you cannot be saved. It's on the screen. Verse 7 says, and after there, and he says, and after there had been much debate, Peter stood up and said to them, brothers, you do know. He said, you, you know that in the early days God made choice among you. That by the mouth of the Gentiles, look at this, should hear the word of the gospel and believe. Verse 8, and God who, who knows the heart bore witness to them by giving them the Holy Spirit just as he did us. Peter says, in other words, God, God saved them. And God saved them and gave them, gave them the sign of the Holy Spirit. And God knows the heart and they wasn't circumcised like us. They didn't go through all these rituals like we did. They just had faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. They put their faith in him and God saved them. Verse 9, and he made no distinction between us and them, having cleansed their hearts. How? By faith. faith. Come on, religious folk. Religious folk don't like this kind of stuff because it's about what we do. It's about how much we serve. It's about how much we give. You can do all of that, and all of that don't mean anything. At the end of the day, we ought to do it by faith and through through grace. Verse 10 said, now therefore, I love this about Peter. Peter says, why therefore? Are you putting God to the test by placing a yoke on the neck of the disciples that neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? Peter said, you got these individuals that's trying to come to Christ and you are, you are making things difficult for them. You try to get them to do the stuff that we wasn't able to do. And, and that's what we do in the church because we, we, we come to the Lord we, and we hang on for a few years. And then now somebody else new come in and now we look down at them. And we forgot that our skirts used to be tight too. We, 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 we forgot that Cousin Cleve used to come to church with us too. Y'all know Cousin Cleve, right? I know Cousin, cousin Cleve. Cousin Cleve. 
cousin Cleve, you know, look, look, boy, look at him, look at him, look at him, just look at him. And we, and we, we forget that y'all, your cousin Cleve, y'all ain't going to talk to me here. We, we, we forget people mess up, people have, people have those shortcomings, people have issues, and he, we're, not, we're, not, we're not trying to condone anything, but the point is, why do we try to forget, why, how soon do we forget? That it was God's grace and God's mercy on our lives that got us to where we are. It's God's grace and God's mercy that got us to the place that we are. And Peter said, stop putting all these weights on people about you got to do this. and You got to dress this way. You got to have it this way. Oh, bah, humbug. Come on here. It is the, the importance that we need to do. We got to put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and everything else we can talk about. That's what, that's what Peter said. Look at verse 11. It's okay. Verse 11 says, but we believe that, that we, we will be saved through, through the grace of the Lord Jesus just as they will. Verse 19 is what I want. It is my judgment, therefore, that we should not make it difficult for the Gentiles who are turning to God. And can I let that, can, I, can that be a word for us that we don't make it difficult for people? Now, I'm not, I'm not come on, yeah, clap that. We can't make it difficult for people. And the religious people want to finish the sentence. That's all. That's what make it. And I'm not talking about watering down the word. I'm not talking about compromising. I'm just saying not to make it difficult for people. You got to do it this way. You got to dress this way. You got to look this way. If you don't say it this way, if you're not here this time and you're not doing it. And we just put all these burdens on people. But then when they go to the club, people accept them. <laughs> People welcome them with their non-dancing self. They still come say, come on and dance. Come on to the club. Come on, let's do it. Come on, let's do it. And here, but when it comes to the church, we, no, that's not the way you say hallelujah. It's hallelujah. It's not the way you say humble. You don't say humble. You say humble. He's not, uh, that, that's, he's not, he's not pastor. That's my hella. <laughs> he, he's a man of God. Oh, we're so deep and we're so extra. Come on here, somebody. Y'all are going to talk to me here. Oh, ah. uh, I'm just messing with you. you know but here the point, the point, the point, the hella. <laughs> I heard that. Can I tell you here? It's, this is what circumcision is about. Romans 2.29, and I'm done. I'm finished, y'all. Romans 2.29 says, but, but a Jew is not one inwardly. And circumcision is a matter of what? The heart. By the spirit. Not by, he's not by the letter. His praise is not from man, but from God. What is Paul saying? Paul says, man, this is about what, this is all about. My circumcision, my cutting away, my life is all about him. Not about things I do on the outside. Out, outside matters. But it's more so because it's an inside job. Come on, put your hands together. Give God some praise. On behalf of everyone at Truth and Love Ministries, we want to thank you for joining us for our virtual worship experience. We want to thank you for your likes and your shares, your comments and your emojis. But we also want to invite you to partner with us as we continue to be the hands and the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ. You do know that he told us that we ought to feed the hungry, we ought to clothe the naked, and we ought to be the church. And you can help us to continue to do just that through your generosity. And there are three easy, safe, and secure ways that you can do just that. You can text the word T-I-L Jax, one word, T-I-L Jax to the number 77977. You can go to our website, www.truthandlove.tv, or you can go to the Apple Store or the Google Play Store, search for Truth and Love Jax, Download our app and you can give that way. We thank you for your participation. We thank you for your generosity and we love you and we'll see you next time. Here comes the church. God bless you.